If question one on Maine's November ballot passes, it will effectively ban the New England Clean Energy Connect project, also known as the CMP Hydropower Transmission Corridor. But could the referendum also affect other projects, as Corridor supporters say it will? News that remains Hannah Janine has been taking a closer look at this and joins us now with the details. Hannah? Pat and Cindy, to fully understand the effects of question one passing, I've gone beyond the question itself, taking a look at this, the law in full that would go into effect, as well as these two telecommunication leases with the state of Maine. In short, what I found is whether these two leases will be impacted is up to interpretation. What you won't see when you read question one on your ballot is what other types of projects it applies to not just high impact electric transmission lines, but also poles, landing strips, pipelines, and railroad tracks. If question one passes retroactive to 2020, all such projects on any main land would require legislative approval by a simple majority. Retroactive to 2014, all such projects on Maine's public land would require legislative approval by a two thirds majority. According to the Maine Bureau of Parks and Lands, other than the NECEC, it has issued only two other leases since September 16th, 2014, the retroactive date listed in the law, that would apply. One of them uses an existing fire tower and the land around its base near the Arista County town of Chapman. The other, a strip of land about two and a half miles for telephone poles from Route 201 to a summer camp in Jackman. According to the Yes on One campaign. Does this apply? Absolutely not. This is the perfect example of something that has never and would never require legislative approval. Lawyer Adam Cody says these projects don't meet the scale of what would warrant legislative approval. It says in that lease it's using the existing ATV line, so no trees are being cut. There's no substantial alteration. But retired Maine Supreme Court Justice Dan Wathen disagrees. This is not a referendum that will affect only CMP. He interprets question one to mean that these other two leases would need retroactive legislative approval. The referendum passes, this lease will be retroactively void and wiped out. New Center Maine was connected to Wathen by the No on One campaign. He is not employed by the campaign or CMP, but is a lawyer for Pierce Atwood, a law firm that has represented CMP on various issues. You don't say, okay, you've gone through, dotted the I's and crossed the T's, but now we're going to say retroactively, this is what you have to do. The key difference in interpretation comes from the line in the law. Any such poles, transmission lines and facilities, landing strips, pipelines and railroad tracks under this subsection are deemed to substantially alter the uses of the land and, to paraphrase, would require two thirds legislative approval. While the no group says this means all projects apply, the yes group says only projects that substantially alter the land would apply. According to the chair of the Joint Standing Committee on Agriculture, Maggie O'Neill, if projects needed legislative approval, it's not extending far beyond a system that's already in place. Maine voters um, in 1993 voted for a constitutional amendment to protect public land. That constitutional amendment essentially says all state park land or Maine public land may not be reduced or substantially altered unless for reasons that get two thirds legislative approval. Really, it's just affirming what's already in our constitution and what's already required. In line with that constitutional protection of the last four major electric transmission line projects in our state, three projects received legislative approval. The fourth, CMP's corridor or the NECEC, did not. Pat and Cindy, back to you. Very interesting. Hannah, thank you so much.